Welcome back to the Crypto's Key Conversations. Today's video should be short. There's not too much going on. It's been pretty quiet in the Twitterverse within the community. I wanted to cover a few things. I'm going to start with this one from Wheezy X. It says, uh, the SEC has uh, a too big to fail policy. And he says, if Hemin would have come out and said Ether was a security, everyone holding ERC-20 tokens would have lost a lot of money. So I don't know uh, what time or like what year or when this actual uh, panel took place, but I thought it was quite interesting uh, what these gentlemen were talking about in this. So let's listen into this really quick. Um, it well, seems, not so much with Ether. maybe not with Ether. And the SEC there's, there's, has said fairly little about Ether in its early there, days. I think, there, I think there's an easier answer. Yeah. They're big. They're big. They're big. I think this is a clear too big. I think the SEC has a too big to fail policy. So I, I do so kind arbitrary. of agree with you because I, I think a lot of people with uh, when Hinman came out and said that present day sales of Ether are not sales of securities, it, there was so much relief because all these ERC-20 tokens, all these things that have been built on the Ethereum blockchain would have been, you know, people would have lost a lot more money, <laughs> right, if it had been said to have been... Um, so, I mean, straight up, I think we can all agree, especially those that's been, you know, hodling, accumulating, you know, XRP all, you know, for all these years, going through uh, litigation with the SEC. Here's the crazy thing is um, even think about the tactics and strategy from, you know, Gary Gensler and the SEC, especially trying to get like, um, you know, John Deaton and the 74,000 plus uh, XRP holders. They're trying to get us, you know, removed and kicked out of the case. And almost in a sense, like we don't have the right to have a voice. But it's crazy because like when the lawsuit was dropped, even, you know, uh, prior to us really diving into this whole ETHgate scandal and the Ethereum free pass timeline, like when they had dropped the suit um, on, uh, you know, the, the community Ripple and XRP holders, like what happened to, uh, you know, the market cap of uh, XRP? What happened to all of the, the, the investors that invest into XRP? I mean, it was decimated. It dropped something like over like 15 billion dollars or something. So just the thought of that alone, like why wouldn't we have the ability to have a voice and a say as to what happens? Yeah, the lawsuit was going, you know, technically against, you know, Ripple, but we know what their strategy was. It was utilized as a weapon. So thinking about like this, if if the roles were flipped and him and did come out and say, you know, Ethereum was a security. I mean, imagine just the chaos that would have hit the market. Think about how many ERC-20 tokens. I mean, majority of the, the digital assets out there are you know erc20 tokens you know uh I, you know i don't know the exact percentage or whatever but i know being in this space in 2017 there's a crap ton of tokens out there so the the market the investors would have been completely decimated and this whole too big to fail policy is i think it's uh, something legit i mean that, that's probably how they view it and the fact that you know they try to say you know it's fully decentralized, this, this, and that. The fact is, is like, no one really knows. I mean, we know that, quote unquote, people know, you know, the people on the inside know what's up. And I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if the SEC did not know, you know, who these disguised wells are and whatnot. I mean, we know that obviously we showed it on this channel. There's, I think it was like two to three wallets that hold like a majority of, you know, uh, a majority of like the, um, the e-token. So when it comes to like, you know, voting power and all that stuff, like they hold a big portion of that. So it's like to sit here and say, you know, it's decentralized, it's fully decentralized and, you know, it's a, a commodity. But then, you know, when it comes to XRP, you attack XRP and ripple the company. Just It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And I'm glad we have the community we have and the people that we have within our community that, step, that stepped up to fight the good fight and stand up for what's right within this space. But I thought that was quite interesting. Shout out Wheezy X. And I know I kind of went on with that one. Uh, this is from Stefan Huber says, Owning the majority of something is not part of the Howie, but the SC claims it is. And how does the SC know that no actor owns the majority of Ethereum? The argument is nonsense. So pretty much uh, what, what I was talking about, and I, I had to, uh, commented down there, says, I completely agree. In my opinion, the SEC and some SEC officials have to know who the disguise walls are. Majority ETH holders, I'm sure. To think otherwise at this point is just silly, in my opinion, of course. So, yeah, I mean, for all the shady stuff that's been uncovered from, you know, from uh, our community members and, uh, you know, brought to light, whether it's from, you know, um, documents that was you know obtained from uh jason foster empire oversights freedom of information act requests and uh you know johnny deaton's involvement in the seventy four thousand xrp holders involvement within litigation ripple in litigation like there's so many things that's been servicing that's just shady's conflicts of interest you know blatant corruption like why at this point would we not 
I mean, we, we just, there's just no way we won't be surprised if they already know what's going on. And the whole thing about, you know, the unknown Shatoshi Nakamoto and all this stuff, it's like, well, we have video footage of uh, um, Homeland Security agents talking about sending agents to meet with these Shatoshi Nakamotos. And there's four, I think it was like four people or something uh, behind Bitcoin. I mean, it's crazy because the the two, like I've said, I've been saying in these videos and it's kind of corny, but like the toothpaste, the toothpaste is out of the tube. I mean, you can't put it back in for us to think that they don't know what's going on and they don't, you know, know, you know, who the majority holders are of Ethereum. And it's not as decentralized as they think. It's it's quite silly, man. Uh, th OK, this was interesting. So obviously, uh, BitBoy Crypto or Brian Armstrong from BitBoy Crypto, there's been a lot of stuff going on in regards of, uh, you know, his uh, involvement um, with I think it was like bills and uh, you know he's really really big on you know standing up against Sam Bankman Freed and FTX and so on. There's just so much stuff going on. Jungle Eek says I'm confused. Did FTX not hold a uh, have a policy against things that deemed illegal securities before? Brian Armstrong says the puzzle pieces are coming together. I've been explaining all this for five weeks and nobody listened because Bitcoin didn't hit a hundred thousand and the XRP case didn't in September. So he's talking about his. Uh, in a sense, when he was kind of speculating based on, you know, the evidence and the, uh, the sources that he had, he was speculating on these things. Uh, he says, time to get past the hate and work together. We are literally watching one man hijack the entire space. And uh, I mean, I said this right here and I completely agree. Uh, Jeremy Hogan was in an interview with um, who was it? Uh, I forgot the two other people that was in a part of this panel, but he said something that kind of stuck with me. And I had it on my uh, home page for for a while. And he was pretty much saying, like. We need to realize that there's massive tribalism going on within the space, and we have to realize that we are one team. We are on the same team. We may have different names, different use cases and utilities, whatever the case is. At the end of the day, it's crypto is one team, and we have to stand up against all the negativity and the negative narratives that are going against us, and that's true. So when uh, Big Boy Brian Armstrong from Big Boy Crypto says, I said, I love it, man. Get past the hate and work together. That's all we need to stand. That's something we all need to stand behind. Crypto is crypto equals number one, one team. We are on the same team, people, the genuine people, investors, devs, etc. in the crypto space need to stop the tribalism and stand together as one. And that's so true because it's clear that the the incumbents, you know, the powers that be the the uh, uh, wealthy people within the, the, the world. They're trying to turn these ships around so their, you know, brothers and sisters and their best friends and buddies can all get on and get a large part, a large piece of the, the crypto pie so they can, you know, you know, moving forward into the future, they can still control that narrative in regards of, you know, uh, wealth and dominance within the space. And based on the stuff that that's been servicing, like it's it's not. It's not a secret in, in, anymore, if it, if it ever was. It's just more obvious now. So we have to stand up for that and realize we are on the same team. Digital Asset Investor says, I have to say, my antenna went up when an exchange I had never heard of all of a sudden has Tom Brady on a TV ad. Someone big is behind it. With what I've witnessed in ETHgate, nothing would surprise me. And that's literally how I feel. A lot of what I, literally, a lot of what I say on, on this channel is my personal opinion. Obviously, you know, I reference a lot of, uh, you know, people on Twitter, YouTube, and things that I hear on podcasts and whatnot. But, like, in my opinion, I feel this exact same way. Like, there's been so much stuff that's been surfaced. How can we not, like, there's no way we could be surprised by just the, the the shadiness, you know, the blatant corruption, you know, the 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 agendas that fit, you know, only a certain percentage of people. And it's just, we have to realize that and stand together. That's just the reality. I'm going to move on here. It's taking way too long. So I thought this was interesting. This is from uh, Riz XRP. It says, ha hashtag XRP, any fiat slash cryptocurrencies within seconds. So I did this myself. I went on to Google and put a uh, world bridge currency. And this this did pop up. It said XRP, the digital currency. XRP acts as a bridge currency to other currencies. It does not discriminate between any fiat cryptocurrency, which makes it easy for any currency to be exchanged for another. I mean, I mean, that's huge. And I said, I said, I said, Googled it myself. Probably nothing, though. <laughs> yeah, we for us that are invested, highly invested in uh, highly excited about XRP and Ripple's future. Like we see the writing on the wall. We know we kind of we are, I guess you could say, very optimistic about the future uh, with Ripple and XRP. We'll just kind of leave it at that. Uh, this was kind of interesting. This is a fun fact. Don't know how they got their, their, you know, their sample for this survey or whatever, but it says 95% of employees at Ripple say it's a great place to work. 
from all the stuff that I've been seeing, you know, even stuff like this, you know, obviously uh, awareness is being there. This is out in London. You know, it's happening. But this is a, a, a company that is being suppressed by, you know, a group of people, obviously SEC being one of the major ones, you know, under under uh, an SEC lawsuit. And they're still expanding, still growing at, at, a, at a tremendous rate. This is absolutely crazy. How could you not get behind that? Based on the evidence that is out there, that is presented to us, how could you not get behind this technology? It just blows my mind that there's still people out there that are just like, oh, no, Banker's Coin and XRP is a poop coin. And I'm like, dude, like, there's a lot of great digital assets out there. Like, why can't this be one of the ones that are just like, wow, man, that's just a legit use case. That's from, you know, the the facts and the evidence that's out there. Man, that's just solid. I got to get, you know, maybe get a little bit of that or just not have any negative comments about it. It's just strange, man. It literally, when I see negative comments or I see negative narrative things, it just makes me want to accumulate more. And I've been buying and accumulating since 2017. So I'm looking to get as much as I possibly can, obviously, while still, you know, investing in all the other assets that I like. But I wanted to spend the last uh, minute or so on, you know, kind of just talking to you real quick. Like, I really appreciate, you know, the love and support. Look at this. 552. I know I'm super small channel, super new. I started this uh, last year, January or this year, January. So it hasn't been, you know, not even, not even a year yet, but we were literally just at 323 or 22 and like within like 24 hours, we jumped 230 subs. Absolutely outstanding, man. I love this. And uh, we have put this video up. One of the big clips in there was uh, Big Boy Crypto when he went off about, you know, just the shady actors and the blank corruption within the space. 14,000 views in two days. I mean, that is absolutely huge, man. I love to see this. It was very, very uh, motivating for me. Like, And it just makes me more excited to bring more content. Uh, this is video 259. Uh, tomorrow or Monday will be video 260. So I've been putting in a lot of work in this channel. Um, obviously, this is just a conversation based on you know uh, topics that are going on within the uh the crypto community, uh, I utilize, like I said, I utilize a lot of people's, uh, you know, tweet threads, videos, and just kind of just spark up a conversation because that's kind of what I enjoy. I love, you know, going on Twitter, going on YouTube, and I've always just kind of wanted to talk about things. So that's why I started this channel. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for this. I mean, look at this 552. I'm really excited to see where this channel goes. But that's what I have for you. Make sure you come to the Crypto is Key Conversation YouTube channel. Subscribe. Follow us on Twitter at Crypto is Key One. I really appreciate you guys. I genuinely do. With all that being said, stay strong out there. Be safe.